Hey guys, welcome to week four of Program Development and Grants. Um, this week we will be looking at chapters nine and ten of the book, uh, so be sure to read those chapters. And um, we're going to be working on budget and um, budget narrative development, which is one of the most important parts of your um, grant because you know they really want to know how you're going to spend that money, right? So it's a very important part of um, articulating your grant proposal. Um, also, your assignment for this week is a dis other discussion post, and this is your last one, and I know you guys will not miss the discussions. <laughs> I know it's uh, they're pretty extensive, um, but hopefully through the discussions, it's going to help you um, kind of move t through your proposal a little easier. It helps you work through some of the issues and problems with it, okay? Um, so in this week's discussion, there are three parts. Um, you're going to develop an, a narrative for your evaluation measures. Now, last week, you guys developed some objectives, right? So um, the evaluation measures are the things you'll put in place to be able to measure how you met those objectives. You know, things like maybe pre and post tests or um, client surveys or um, things like that that might be applicable to your particular program. So you can show how you met those objectives um, how you track that and how you make sure that you continually um, meet those objectives. Okay. Um, the second thing you'll be doing is developing your draft budget and budget narrative. Like I said, this is one of the most important parts and there's a lot of content in this module this week that's, that's intended to help with that. There is um, a template in there for proposals that hopefully will help you with your um, budget development. There's a budget justification template uh, that kind of helps uh, develop that part of it, which is, uh, it, that's the term a lot of people use budget justification or budget narrative. And there's also a format in there. I also put some tutorials in there about Microsoft Excel and uh, how to work on the budget. Uh, if some of you may not be as familiar with Excel, um, but it, it's super easy to use. Um, so that that's in there as a resource for you guys. Um, so uh, utilize that as you go through. Um, one piece of advice on the budget and budget narrative is be sure to think of all the costs associated with what you're doing. And I know some of you uh, in reading some of your week two discussions, which I just finished up tonight, um, you had some concepts that were maybe very big, you know, multiple centers, multiple sites for, you know, treatment programs or things. This is the point where you're going to come to realize that you really have to pare that down because uh, the budget becomes so complex and so convoluted. It's, it's almost too much. So for the purposes of this class, like I said, keep it simple. And you may get to this part because this is really on the budget is where the rubber meets the road. OK, um, you may realize that your project may not you may have to tweak your project a little bit. Um, and, and this is usually when people do it. Now, a lot of times when I work with uh, folks, you know, I work with folks all the time at Concord that are trying to write their grants. And a lot of the uh, the first thing I work on them with is their budget um, because they're the experts on the content. But I'm the expert on budgeting and making sure we're agreeing to the right things. So um, we usually start with budgeting, and it really helps people to think about how they need to structure their program and what all, how much it's really going to cost. Because when you're actually doing a grant proposal, they give you a maximum you can uh, apply to most of the time. So your maximum may be $200,000. But when you sit down and do the budget, you realize it's going to cost you $400,000. Well, you may have to adjust your grant proposal to make it work with $200,000, right? You might have to roll back some of the services, do some things differently, get a little creative, and make it work a little better for what for the amount of money you need. Now, in this particular instance for this class, I don't believe there was a cap on, uh, there may have been a cap on, on the grant proposal, um, but uh, be sure to, to, you know, really sit down and think about that stuff. And when you're doing your budget narrative, it should reflect your budget. Okay, your budget will be like an Excel format, just like you would see a budget for your department or a budget for, uh, you know, your organization you might be working with. 
Um, or even like your family budget. You know, you have income, expenses, those kind of things. And this portion of it, it would just be your expenses. That's your budget. Okay. Now, your budget narrative should explain all that. You know, you might say in your budget, uh, three staff at $40,000 a year. Blah. In your narrative, you explain what those the responsibilities are for those staff. What are they doing? What are their titles? What, uh, what function do they serve? Um, you know, you might say supplies, um, general office supplies, $500. Well, explain a little bit more about that. What does that include? Um, so, and, and why it's important. Because people need to understand why it's important to be in your budget. So that's where you get to do that. That You get to explain it in a little bit more detail. Okay. The third thing you'll be doing in that discussion is you're updating your logic model. Now, last week you guys did a logic model and you um, started developing that. Now, this week... You know, with what you've learned and your budget, you know, you, things may change a little bit. So you get to update that logic model. Okay. Now, with this in mind, you know, we are in week four of a five-week course. Now, next week, your proposal will be due. I think it's on Wednesday um, the 13th, I believe it is. So be sure to be looking ahead. All these assignments in the discussion were intended to help you build your proposal. Okay. So in that proposal tab, right under your weekly tabs, where you go in and see your module, uh, you have that proposal tab. And in there, the RFP is considered your instructions. These are your guidelines. It tells you what you can and cannot do for your proposal. Okay. Because like I said last week, you know, you're applying to this general proposal for the Athens Foundation. This is all fictional, but in week two assignment, I just wanted you to learn how to look for funding because that will serve you if you want to do this on your own. Okay. So look at your RFP. This is your, the rules and regulations. These are hard and fast rules, just like with any grant, you know, you can't bend the rules. These are the rules. So it has to be, you follow them exactly. Okay. Uh, there's also some forms in there that are used to submit this grant proposal. So those forms must be filled out and submitted with your grant proposal. So when you submit your grant proposal, which there's also a submission in there to submit your document, it should all be in one document. You should have um, your forms, your cover sheet, you should have your budget forms, your narrative, all the required sections in those uh, that RFP, you know, those instructions, all the required sections, all in one condensed document, okay? And then you're going to upload it at that, that portion of the proposal. So be sure to be looking ahead, thinking about that. You may be able to start piecing some things together and uh, understanding what you may need to change or improve. Um, now, I will tell you guys, uh, I have a little bit of feedback about last week. Um, you know, I already addressed some of the issues with things being too broad. Be sure you keep your topic simple uh, because your budget can be a nightmare if you have a, a, a very large project. So try to keep your concepts simple. Uh, you may need to pare it down a little bit. Same in the other direction. If you have it too simple, you may need to pare it up a little bit just to make it work. Um, some of the issues I found with week two uh, discussions were that... Um, you weren't, some folks weren't very clear on what they were trying to do. Those objectives become very important and you have your, your need section need to support those, those objectives. You're saying, you're, you're saying there's a need, why it's a need. Here's what we're going to do to address it. Here's exactly how we're going to do it via objectives to obtain this goal. This is, you know, you provide some scientific proof as to why it's important. Why is it the best way to do it? Are other people doing it? Is it successful? Is there any science behind it? You know, that kind of thing. Um, so be sure to really develop those objectives. So I'm looking forward to reading week three discussions, and I'll try to get those back to you guys as quickly as I can once we finish that up. Uh, also, be sure when you're doing your um, narrative uh, not to address, you know, wanting to ask for more grants. Um, there is not a granting agency out there that will fund a grant that allows you to hire a grant writer um, or build a grant writing team or anything like that. When grantees, when granting agencies 
give funding. They want to fund a project or they want to see an impact. They want to fund something they can show that they fund, they gave funding to this wonderful concept or this wonderful intervention. They are not going to fund you, give you more money to find more money. Um, the federal government doesn't even do that. Um, they, they don't allow you to grant right on your um, federal grant for your next round of federal grants. Like, for example, at, at Concord, we have a lot of what they call uh, Department of Ed TRIO funding, Student Support Services, Upward Bound. Those are five-year programs that re they renew, they write for every five years. But our folks that work on those grants can't spend their time at work working on the next grant cycle, uh, their proposals, because the federal government will not pay for grant writing. Uh, most foundations and everything else feel the same way. So be sure to avoid that kind of language and um, uh, keep that in mind moving forward. Uh, and some of you uh, have, I have talked to some of you about changing your topics and you may be finding that your topic is not working out exactly the way you wanted it to. So you may want to make a change and that is perfectly fine. Be sure and do that. Um, that is okay to do um, even midstream. Um, you know, you can have it changed for the final proposal. That is okay. Um, now this week, I'll tell you guys, um, if you need to talk to me about your pro project, and I put some notes on there for you to contact me if, if uh, you're having trouble thinking it through. I do not mind to talk to you guys anytime. Um, if you need uh, to talk in the evenings after work, let me know. We'll schedule a time um, and I'll, I'll call you, you know, later at night. Um, you know, a lot of times I like to do calls after about 830 because my kids go to bed at eight. <laughs> Makes it a little bit easier. Um, so we can do it any time that works for you guys during the day. I'm in the office, but after about Thursday evening, my availability is going to be somewhat limited. So um, I'm going to be out of town. Uh, I will be answering emails and, and getting back with you guys, but I will not be in the office. And my ability to set up calls with you guys might be a little bit um a little bit harder because I will be on traveling and on the road. Um, so I'll, I can try to get back to you guys as quickly as possible. But if you need to talk to me about your proposal project, please talk to me by Thursday during the day um, because I will be traveling. I'll be on a plane Friday. Um, I'll be, you know, doing some, some things uh, over the weekend and I will not be back in the office until the following Thursday. Uh, and I know proposals are due on Wednesday. So if you need to talk to me, do it early. Um, I can try to schedule over the weekend in the first part of next week if it works out, but um, I can't make a lot of promises. So please try to schedule early and talk to me about it if, if you're struggling or if you have questions. Okay. Um, so be sure and let me know. Okay. So, well, this is week four. Uh, so guys, we're almost done. This is the very last discussion you're going to have to do. The next step is the proposal. Um, I'm going to try to get your assignments back and graded as quickly as possible. Um, this week, I'm going to try to get some things done before I leave. Um, and, uh, Hopefully you'll see a lot more feedback so you can use it toward your project. Um, so if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me uh, anytime via email. I'll try to get back to everybody as quickly as possible. Um, so uh, be sure and reach out. Okay. All right. We'll have a great week for take care.